Yes. Um, just a minute to go and then we can start. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Oke Okonfolami. I am a business analyst and I'll be taking you through this presentation this evening. Um, so um, if you check what um, the information you have about what we're going to be going through today, um, part of it is function, navigating the Azure Springboard and then we've got um, how to write user stories and acceptance criteria. However, I think for us to get more of the, out of this session, it will be better to go through uh, writing user stories and acceptance criteria, and then we can um, talk about um, populating the backlog, you know, navigating the Azure um, Springboard. So it will kind of be like a more practical session in the sense that you'd have learned how to write the user stories, the acceptance criteria, and then you would learn how to put them on the Azure Springboard. So I think that's a, a good approach. Okay, so in terms of an outline, we're going to be looking at epics, features, user stories, acceptance criteria, and then we'll end um, by you know populating the backlog and then I'll show you how to navigate the Azure Sprint board. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so just a second. All right, so um, starting with epics, you must have had um, mention of epics features user story, user stories, and we're gonna be discussing about the relationship between, between the three. So an epic is a high level body of work that bands together a group of related stories. So you can put um, a number of stories together to form an epic. You can also describe an epic as large pieces of work that can be broken down into smaller, more manageable um, work items. And these will typically require, an epic will typically require a development work covering several sprints. In other words, um, an epic cannot be completed in one sprint. As we go on further, you will begin to understand how, um, how the epic is related to the user um, story. So all you need to know for now is an epic um, is, uh, a band of stories, so it is a, a collection of stories. And an epic can be broken down into features. So if you have an epic, you can break it down into smaller stories that you would then refer to, or smaller pieces of work that you would then refer to as features. Okay, so and features are epics that have been broken down. A feature can also be referred to as a chunk of work from the epic. A feature can also be referred to as a deliverable that adds value and moves towards completing the epic. Again, a feature is also a story that cannot be delivered within a sprint. So what you can take from this slide is that an epic can be um, broken down into a number of features. So if you think about it, an epic is a bigger piece of work than, than a feature, okay? So when you break, an, uh, break down an epic, you can get, a number of features. And the really interesting one, the user stories. So we've talked about how you can break down an epic into a number of features. You can further break down um, features 
and then get user stories. So what are user stories? They are short, um, simple descriptions of a feature told from the perspective of the person who desires the new capability, usually a user or customer of the system. So that's the relationship. So if you kind of look at it, the Epic is up there and then um, you break it down into a number of features and you can break the features down into a number of um, user stories. I think I've got that slide somewhere here. Uh -huh. So if you look at this diagram, you see the Epic at the top and the feature on the next followed by the user story and then we have a task. So what this means is can break an Epic into, so it's a large piece of work. So in this, in this diagram, the Epic is the largest piece of work that can be broken down into a number of features. So a feature is a smaller bundle, it's a smaller, piece of work compared to the epic. But then if you break it further down, you get user stories. And then when you break down the user stories, you get tasks. These tasks can also be called subtasks, depending on what um, platform you're using, if it's Azure or, or um, Jira, okay? So this is just another illustration to show how the epic can be broken down into features and the features into product backlog items. And um, so the product backlog items, uh, another way of referring to user stories, okay? And then those can further be broken down into tasks, right? So where were we? User stories, okay. So we've talked about how the user story um, is actually talking about what the user wants. It's usually from the um, user's perspective, you know, it's from the perspective of the person that desires that new system or the new capability. It talks about how a particular bit of feature will offer something of value. Okay, so one thing to note is that you would always write a user story as if you are the one going to be using the system or the product, you know, or that capability. So just bear that in mind as a BA, you would always stand in the position of the user and interpret the story as if you were the one that was going to be to be using it. So you will say, I, you personalize, personalize it and say, I, as if it was, it, it was going to be used by yourself. Okay. So um, we'll just consider the benefits of user stories. Like why do we even write um, user stories? Why would a business analyst write user stories? So there are quite a few benefits or reasons why I would write user stories. I've just captured a few of them. Um, First one here says help to help in capturing product functionality from the user's perspective. Again, that emphasis is from the user's side. Think about it. Is there any point building um, a product, developing a product or an application or creating a system or a process and it's not um, fit for purpose? That would be worthless, isn't it? That would be useless. You know, so if you stand in the stead of the user and capture, you know, the requirements from their perspective, chances are you're going to create, the development team is going to be able to create a product or a process or whatever it is that would suit the user's needs. So that's one important, that's the first thing, uh, point to note, you know, when talking about user stories. Um, it helps capture that functionality from the user's perspective. And that's really important. The second one here says it gives the developers a better understanding of what, for whom, and why they are building. And when we get to the point where we um, write the story, you would see what, um, what we mean by this, you know, it, it, the, it gives the development team a better understanding of who they're developing it for, why are we developing it, and what value is it going to be adding, okay? The third one says it allows for an equal amount of understanding and collaboration. So the user story is you it, it can be lacking to uh how would I say now? Would I call it talking points? Like so it, it, when you take the user story that's completely written to a spring planning meeting or a refinement meeting, is the basis for conversation. That's the way you ensure that the development team, you know, is on the same page with you and the clients or the business that you're designing this solution for, because you'd have um, elicited, you'd have done a um, requirement elicitation and gathered 
requirements from the stakeholders, right? You then want to capture and document these requirements in a way that the development team will understand, the rest of your team will understand. And then there's that shared understanding, you know, of what is expected, of what is required. And finally here it says, user stories drive creative solutions. What this means is that you find that after trying to capture the requirements, remember you're a business analyst. It doesn't mean that you are the solution provider. And again, remember that I said it's like a basis for future con conversation with um, the developers. So you you write everything down, but you're going to have further discussions with the developers, and then they can come up with better ways, you know, um, to meet those requirements or better solutions for uh, to satisfy the the client's needs. So that's what it means by saying um, they drive creative um, solutions. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the qualities of a good user story, okay? Um, if you look at what we have on the screen, it says, um, the acronym there is um, INVEST, I-N-V-E-S-T. So a good, a good user story should be independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, and testable. So I'm just going to quickly talk us through what these, these mean. Independent, this means that um, it should be a standalone story. It should be a standalone story, especially from future stories. So it shouldn't be dependent on any other story. Can you imagine if you were uh, about to do a piece of work and it was dependent on some future work being completed? It simply means that you can't carry on with the work you're, you're planning on doing, isn't it? So and a, a good user story will be independent from future um, user story. But another way of saying it is that it's a standalone story and independent of any other story so that it can allow for proper prioritization. Okay. As you start um working on your on your projects, one thing that you come across is uh, you need to have meetings with your product owner, you know, to prioritize after you've gathered the requirements, you will then go back to the product owner and then you, there will have to be prioritization, you know, of the, the stories, the requirements that you've put together. So if um, a, a story that we're about to um, um, work on now is dependent on a future one, obviously, you know that that's an impediment, impediment is blocked, that story will be blocked. So yeah, you cannot go ahead with it. Mohammed, I can see that your hand is up, but I'd like to ask that, um, if you can take a note of your question, when we finish this first session, then we can open up for questions. Is that okay? If you can just put a comment to confirm, um, that would be great. All right, so where were we? So the next one is um, negotiable. What that means is that um, it's not set in stone. So as a, as a BA, when you write a story, it's not like when you bring it to the team, that's the... Um, the end of it is like, um, this is exactly how it should be. You can negotiate. Sorry, there's somebody that um, omitted. Can you mute, please? Thank you. Um, so what that means is that um, it just captures the, the, the essence of the need. It's not a specific description of the solution. So you can negotiate with the client as to how you're going to meet that requirement. The next point there is valuable. This one even goes without saying, you know, like, would there be a point to doing work that is not valuable, you know, for a client? So it has to bring value to the user and the organization. If if it's not going to meet that criteria, then it shouldn't even be, be done in the first place. Next one is estimable. It should be estimable by the development team. So as you start working on your project, you find that you, you um, in your teams, um, the developers and the, the, the QAs, they will have to estimate um, stories. Estimation has to do with the, you know, the complexity of the, of the user story, the level of resource, time, and, and budget even needed to complete that piece of work. So the story that you write must be estimable. You know? And then the next one is small. So it should be small enough to be completed within a sprint. If you remember when we talked about the epics and the features, we said that they cannot be completed in one sprint. That work cannot be developed in one sprint. However, um, 
the user story can be developed in one sprint. So it should be small enough, a small chunk, a small chunk of work, and anyone should be able to understand it easily and be able to um, develop it within a sprint. The final point there says testable. So it should be testable for completion and sign off. What this means is that um, after the work has been done, uh, it will need to be tested. And this story should have the ability to be tested when it is um, when the work is completed. We'll see, um, we'll kind of have an idea of what that means as we go on in this um, in this um, workshop. So a good user story should be independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, and testable. <clears throat> so having said that, or said all that about a user story, there is a specific format of um, user stories. Okay, So this is the format. So you've got like the as a, I want to so that. So that's the basic format of a, a user story, as a, I want to, so that, as a, and then you continue the sentence and then describe the type of user. I want to, so you have to state what the goal is, and then so that you're given the reason why, okay? So as a, so in fact, I'll show us examples just to, to, to portray that point, but you, you state the type of user, and you define what goal needs to be achieved and the reason for achieving that goal or the value that will be added, you know, by achieving that goal. Okay, so this is an example. User story is a simple one, <clears throat> but if you think about it uh, as a business analyst, um, we're analyzing processes, you know, like we're developing solutions or we're, we're facilitating the development of solutions and all that. So. It, it, you can work anywhere. I know like um, your tutor yesterday mentioned it, like you can work anywhere. Um, it doesn't have to be website development alone. You can be involved in process improvements, um, digital transformation projects and all sorts, you know. Um, but even working on the street, if you see something that's faulty, right? Like as a business analyst, you're like, mm, I say, I want to, so that, you know. So, I mean, that's the kind of um, heart you should have on all the time. I mean, like you're a problem solver. So simple example, as a, obviously, grammatically, it has to be a, 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 and here a, as an online shopper. So the type of user is really specific, an online shopper. So not just a user, as an online shopper, I want to, what do you want to do? View a list of products. Why do you want to view the products? What value will be added when you view a list of products so that I can select some items to purchase. It's that simple. In fact, sometimes when you write a user story, you're like, oh, this sounds so simple. But believe, believe me, this is the basis for future conversations. And as we go on, you see that it doesn't stand on its own. A user story is not complete uh, without some other, other things that we'll discuss as we, as we go on. So as an, what's the kind of user? Online shopper, I want to, I want to what? view a list of product, why? So that I can select some items to, to purchase. Okay, I hope that's clear enough. Okay, um, now I've put more examples and I'm trying to give like um, a scenario. So imagine, because I'm giving scenarios because you're going to be working in a project, right? And um, what you should be doing at this stage is, okay, so what you should be doing at this stage is trying to get, um, information so you should be doing requirements elicitation you know you should be holding those kind of meetings with your your product owner okay so let's assume you've had this meeting with your product owner and you've been told what the project mandate is you've been you've been told like okay this is the project um i mean you've been given all the information so the project mandate really will tell you all you know about the so what I've just captured uh, a project Monday and I've put into and part of the work done. Again, as we said, it's a large, a large work. Okay, so um, the project mandate says create an application that will facilitate ingestion and processing 
system of finance data. This will be the existing system like Excel while improving efficiency. So you've had a discussion with the product. You've talked about all the things that they want to do. And you know that one of the, the things that they would um, want to have for an, any application, there will be a landing page, isn't it? So when you click on them, um, when you type in uh, www dot whatever, 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 you, you, and you click enter or you submit, you would get to a landing page or some people call it a home page, right? So this is what it means. So for any application, um, you would have that, you know, that starting page. So we're calling it a landing page in this case. Okay, so we've said our uh, Epic is the landing page, right? Now, this is how you think about it. So what goes on the landing page? Because this landing page, you know, it, it's not going to be blank. It's not going to be empty. So if you think about it, when you land on a website a page, a web page, what do you see there? And that's where you start thinking about the features that will contribute to developing that epic. If you remember, we talked about how the features, you know, are smaller stories that help, you know, achieve the, the, the larger story, which is the epic. So we've split the landing page into a number of features and we have the header menu, the main body and the footer. For every, for every um, web page, you know, when you get on that home page, that, like, and you will see stuff at the very top. And that's what we're referring to as the header. Uh, and then you find stuff on the main, you know, body where you've got proper information about that website or whatever. I mean, it could be all sorts of, of things put on there. And then at the very bottom, you've got uh, the footer. Okay. So we've, broken that epic into a number of features, three features here. The next page, you will see that we've then taken those three features. Let's go back and see. Header menu, main body, and footer. So if you see here, we've got those three features, the header menu, the, okay, so I called it the side navigation panel, okay, and the uh, footer menu. So those three have now been further broken down into user stories. So these are the tiny, I'm calling them tiny, well, you know what I mean, like compared to the Epic and the features, right? There are smaller pieces of work that um, can be completed within a sprint. So under the header menu, we have a um, logo visible on landing page, um, a home button on landing page, ability to register. So we are, um, let's assume that um, the users, right, in that organization, they will have to register to be on that app. You know, or some people say sign up or yeah, sign up or register. So you want them to have the ability to register. It's another one, ability to log in. So this would be after you've registered, then so for the first time you would register, of course. And then when you come back, you want to be able to log in. And then we've got the search functionality, you know, like that space bar where you can type for stuff as in buzzwords and all that. And then it can lead you to maybe the exact page or um where you're looking for what you need. Okay, so under the side navigation panel, we've got three user stories, put an invocation screen for changes, um, data set pick list, display analytics graph. So these are examples, okay? And I would show us um, this, some of the stories underneath this as well. Then we've got the footer menu. Under the footer menu, we've got uh, help and documentation, useful links, IT support contacts, okay? Um, the help and documentation is basically to, uh, is, when you click on it, it will take you to, you know, like, as it says, help and documentation, where stuff, um, where further information has been documented and where you can get help about the application. The useful links, again, when you click on it, it'll be for relevant um, um, topics. And then IT support, if you were having any problems with the application, then you can click on that, and, or you have the contact details, depending on how they want to create or develop the solution, okay? So this is, I'll take us back again, just so we remember. So we had the project mandate, we've had a discussion. One of the things we will need will be a landing page, okay? And that's the epic. We know that the landing page, we cannot create everything in one sprint. Now, you must have been told by one some of the tutors, um, the duration of the sprint. So for, for a lot of projects, it's two weeks, like where I work, it's, it's two weeks, you know, so for, for some people do one month, that's four weeks, um, but a lot of people do two, two weeks. And here, 
in blue sky, it will be two weeks. So the duration of your sprint will be two, two weeks. So 10 working days. Okay. And um, so you've decided you've decided that landing the landing page will be one of the um, things that um you need to deliver, that the team needs to deliver. Now we further broken that down into the different aspects of the landing page. So the header menu, uh, so let's say the side navigation panel and the footer. Okay. Further broken those three features into a number of different user stories. Okay, so just to recap. All right, so I'm just showing us how everything kind of looks, you know, in one page. And um, so the Epic is the landing page and the features, those are the three features and those are the user stories that relate to each feature, okay? So it's just the same thing that I've said before. Give us a few seconds to have um, a better look, right? Okay, moving on. Now, so I'm just gonna pick some of the user stories and just show us. So you know how we talked about um, as an online shopper, I want to see a list of products so that I can select, you know? Okay, how about we try to use something that's more like tied in to the examples that we've just um, um, spoken about. So one of the user stories we said there was what? Ability to register, okay? Come here. Now, the same simple format as a I want to, so that, right? And um, so, as a new user, so remember that I said for the, in fact, who would be registering anyway, or who will be signing up for something? It's the first time user, isn't it? So, you could say as a new user or as a first time user, whichever one, um, the choice of language is really up to you as far as it conveys. Um, the message correctly and everyone understands. So as a new user, I want to be able to register my username and um, password so that the system can remember my details. So if you just think about it, uh, what does it entail to, what does registration entail? You want to put in username, um, your username and password. You know, some even go as far as putting in like your email address, maybe like your, your work email address, but we're keeping this really simple. And assuming it's just a username and password. And in some cases, the username might even be, they might specify and say your username is your email address, but let's not even go that far. Simple story, as a first time user or as a new user, I want to be able to register my username and password so that the system can remember my details, okay? Another example, login. So assuming I have already registered, so the system has saved my details and can remember my details, when I come back as a registered user, I want to log in with my username and password so that I can gain access into the system. Okay. I'm hoping that we're following that so far. So the first one was for the first time user and the second one was for um, the registered user. Again, the choice of language is up to you as long as you're able to convey the message clearly to yeah, the rest of your, your, your team. However, you must follow the format as a, I want to show that, okay? So you see both stories have, have followed that format. I mean, if you were to call two BAs and check the user stories for the same um, um, functionality, you'll find that they might actually be different. By the end of the day, the team is going to develop. So if there were two teams doing the same thing, at the end of the day, the, team, the teams, the two teams will develop the same thing, you know, if they've correctly captured uh, the requirements. Choice of language, really, it doesn't matter because um, the way we write things is very much dependent on how we speak and, you know, our choice of grammar, really. Okay. So one of the other um, user stories was the, was the data set pick list. Let me take us back again so we can see where that came from. Okay, so under the main body, we have invocation screen for changes and data set pick list. So you might even be wondering, what is the data set pick list, right? Which is fine. I mean, when you even see the title of a user story, you might not even know what it entails, but when you go um, into it, when you drill down, you will then begin to understand what that user story is all about. So data set pick list, the same format, if you, if you can see that. Um, as a registered user, I want to be presented with a pick list. So let me explain. A pick list is a drop down too, right? As uh, as a registered user, I want to be presented with a pick list displaying the available data sets so that I can select 
a data set, the same format as uh, I want to so that. And then another user story, help and documentation. As a registered user, I want to access the help and documentation page so that I can see relevant information relating to specific data sets. Okay. Now, so that that's well, we've just covered user stories and how to write user stories. But guess what? A user story isn't complete until you have this right here. A user story on its own is just like a wish list, really. Like, oh, I'd like to have a shopping list where I can, you know, see the different products. But how is that going to happen? You need some structure, you know, to, to help the developers create that product or improve that process, you know, to create, um, close the gap in that, in, in that process. So a user story on its own is really of no value without um, the acceptance criteria. So what is an acceptance criteria? Acceptance criteria, these are the conditions of a project, a product or aspects within them that must be met before deliverables are accepted. The acceptance criteria refers to a specific and defined list of conditions that need to be met before a project can be considered completed and the project deliverables are accepted by the client. So it's just like a conditions really that must be met before the client can say, okay, you've met this requirement. Okay, you have delivered what you said you were going to deliver okay so that's essentially what the acceptance criteria is again as we know if all these things there will be formats and and all and all of that okay now the question is why are we writing an acceptance criteria why is it so important uh, why why is it that the user story cannot stand alone and it needs and uh, the acceptance criteria again there are so many different um and reasons but i've picked four the first one says, when written in Gherkin syntax, the acceptance criteria can be used to drive test automation. Gherkin syntax is the format that we use in writing acceptance criteria. It's not the only format. It's not the only format, but it's a format that really helps test as, you know, and it, it helps, like it says, to drive test automation. Um, okay, the next one says, it describes how the development will meet or fail to meet expected outcomes. Again, you know how we said um, it's a set of conditions or a list of conditions that need to be met. So when you have a list of conditions, if they are not met, then you know that it's failed to meet expected outcomes. And if they are met, then you know, okay, development is complete. So it's kind of like a measure. It shows how a development will meet or fail or fail to meet expected outcomes. It helps in measuring, achieving, and proving to clients that the work is complete. Again, imagine if you have a tick, a tick list. And I second it's not like a tick list, but I'm likening it to a tick list. So if you've got a list of conditions that must be met, if you've been able to tick all those lists, then you know that the work is done, right? And you can take that anywhere and say, here you go, we've done everything, um, that's the work complete. And that ties nicely to the fourth um, 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 point here. It, it helps protect oneself and the company from issues such as non-payment. So, I mean, if you have, again, that tick list and you can go over it and say that box, has, all the boxes have been ticked, your work is complete. You cannot say, can, can I have my money? <laughs> you know, like, so um, it would help protect yourself, your team, the organization from issues such as non-payment from clients, okay? Because you're able to show how you have met expected outcomes and how you have completed the work, okay? Okay, so remember we mentioned Gherkin syntax. So for the user stories, we said there is a format. Again, for, for the acceptance criteria, there is a, a format. So for the user stories, we said as a, I want to show that. So for the acceptance criteria, one way of writing it is using the Gherkin syntax. It says, um, the acceptance criteria can be written in the behavior-driven development syntax of Gherkin, the Gherkin syntax. So what is this format? It will get clearer in the next slide. This, this bit has, it seems to have a lot of information because 
um, it's showing the 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 showing what the specific um, items here mean. So you should be writing scenarios, right? So the scenario is a short description of the so short description of the scenario. You get what I mean, like a short description of what is going to happen or what is expected at the end of of this whole uh, um, process. So it says given, when, then, and given. That's the beginning of the scenario, isn't it? A precondition. When it's a specific action that the user takes for an event that is a trigger for an outcome. Then it's a testable outcome, usually caused by the action in the when statement. So um, it then follows the when, okay? And it leads to the post condition or outcome. So then is the outcome. Given is the precondition. When is the action that should be taken? Then is the outcome following that action. Okay. And it's simply an operator. It's used to join any of these preconditions and it can, and this continues any of the other three operators above. So what this means, in fact, let me take you to the next um, slide so that I can explain a bit more. So that, and depending on, so there's a note here, depending on how complex the scenario is, you might find the and being used more than once and or in a different position than as shown earlier. There might also be scenarios where the and is not present. Let me explain what I mean. So we have in this scenario, given, when, then, and. What we're saying is that depending on the, 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 the complexity of the scenario, you might have given and when, then, or you might have given when and then, or you may have given when, then, and, or you may have given and, 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 when, then, you know. So don't get hung up on it, okay? Because there was a time when we used to like worry like, oh, what is the correct format? But you find that when, you, when you're working in different organizations, there are great ways of doing things in different organizations. As far as the development team understands what is being written, and as far as there's that shared understanding and agreement, you are fine. So in some stories, they can be so simple that there, there wouldn't be this and. Some stories, some scenarios are, are, are so complicated that you will find loads of ants. And sometimes the ants may be positioned in all sorts of places, okay? So that's all this means. Right, so I'll show you instead. Uh, okay, so I have given, when, and then. The second one is uh, giving and when then, and then the other one is giving when then. And, I mean, you see that the and it sits all over the place. Again, it's a connector. All right, it is a connector. Right, so remember that I said a user story on its own is just like a wish, just like making a wish, really. Like, I want to do this so that I can do that. I'd like to have this so that I can do that. But then how are you going to guarantee that all the conditions are met and that product is developed? That's the acceptance criteria. The acceptance criteria is really important because it helps for testing. So that's what the testers will use. When you start working on your projects, you see when you're doing like your refinement sessions, uh, or even spring planning, whichever um, time they choose to look at the stories, um, you will see that the testers will be looking critically at the acceptance criteria, you know, because it will impact on, on their work, the nature of their work. Uh, if the acceptance criteria is not properly written, they will not really be able to, you know, complete their test. So it drives um, um, testing. Okay, so going back to our story, you know, when we're talking about um, registration, right? So one of the stories was the uh, ability to register, isn't it? Okay, so now we know that you can't just have the story stand alone. It has to have an acceptance criteria. So I've given us a complete, uh, um, uh, I've given us the complete thing here. So the user story says, as a registered user, I want to log in with my username and password so that I can gain access into the system. So what's the acceptance criteria? Again, if you remember, we said you have to put uh, the scenario. So the first scenario is that the user is able to successfully log in. Okay, so scenario one, user successfully logs in. And then I put in back uh, co correct details. So what are the steps that you're expecting to happen? 
So giving, what's the precondition? I am a registered user. That means I must be a registered user because for you to even log in, you have to have your username and password, isn't it? Remember, this is not the first time user. We've already addressed that. So that, that that's the ability to log in. But this story we're talking about is for a registered user. So what's the precondition? You have to be a registered user, meaning that an unregistered user cannot gain access to the system, right? So given I am a registered user, when I enter my username and I enter my password and I click the submit button, then I am directed to my profile page. What does that mean? It means I've successfully logged in. So we're assuming that when you successfully logged in, you, you land on your profile page. You know how like this website for you to, when you sign in, it takes you to another page where you see your profile, maybe at the top, you know, it's now specific to you. Or if you think about it, even like Amazon and all these other like shopping websites. And if you, if you are a reg, if you are a registered user there, when you sign in, you then start seeing your profile and seeing stuff that is tailored specifically to you. Okay. So scenario one is for the user successfully logging in. Let's see. There's another scenario. Scenario two, user fails to log in in bracket incorrect details. Okay. So you will try to capture as many scenarios as possible because the tester is going to test. Remember we said it's showing you, let me take us back so we can see the point I'm trying to make here. Okay. When we're talking about the, uh, the, the, the reasons we're writing a sequence question, it says, the second one says, it describes how the developer will meet or fail to meet expected outcomes. So you put like um, a happy path you know, and uh, like a negative path as well. So if I were to put in the correct details, my username, so you see that username that I put for status to, to register and my password. If I if I put everything in correctly the second time I'm there, then I should be able to gain access, right? But how about I make a mistake, maybe a spelling error, or I put somebody else's email address, you know, that combination, what then happens? So that's this scenario where the user fails to, to log in. So because the tester will want to test everything, hap uh, the happy part, which means everything is happening successfully. And then they want to play around with it to make sure that that application is, um, is what would I, call, would I call it fail proof? If you get what I mean, like, so can anybody just access it? So what if I registered and then I come back and I put in um, my friend's email address, I put in my user, uh, my uh, and password, Am I, I'm not supposed to be able to gain access into the system, am I? I shouldn't. So that's why the testers would, would try that scenario. And how do they get a scenario? Because you've written it out here. So then when they're testing it, okay, let me show you what they would do. So <laughs> I don't know what the technical is, right? But what I know is when they're um, I'm testing it, they would enter in. So this is after the developers have created the app, right? Now, so they will enter or they've enabled that ability for, for, for a, a registered user to, to, to log in, right? So when the tester is going through it, and the tester will put in the correct username, correct password, they will hit submit, and then they land on the profile page. It's like, oh, okay, happy days. And the tester will try another scenario, put in the incorrect login details and click the submit button. What should happen? You shouldn't be able to move beyond that page. Think about it when you are on all these websites or in any platform that you are registered. If you put in um, um, a combination of uh, whatever the combination might be and uh, that amounts to incorrect details, it wouldn't let you access the system. Okay, so you will probably get like an error message or something. So this story says, given I'm a registered user, when I enter incorrect login details and I click the submit button, then my login attempt will be unsuccessful and an error message will be displayed, okay? So you also have the opportunity to put in additional information. And in some uh, um, organizations, it might even be technical details, just put them all in here to clarify. Because for example, what does incorrect login details mean? You know, so we've put in under the additional information, incorrect details could be incorrect username and or incorrect password. So what does that mean? If the tester is going and put the correct username and an incorrect password, that is an incorrect, that's incorrect details, isn't it? Or if they put, uh, 
uh, an incorrect um, username and a correct password. That also amounts to incorrect details. Or if they put the username and password be, um, both incorrect, um, that would also be incorrect details. Um, Oz Ozomena, um, I see your hand is up. Again, um, would you mind? I will still round up this half of the uh, the the whole session, and then I can open up to questions. Okay, if you just take a note of your questions, and then I would I would answer them. Okay, right. So um, where are we? Yeah. So this is just more explanation about what additional inform and what incorrect details means. The second uh, uh, point here. So you see the, the the last bit of the scenario. It says, and an error message will be displayed, right? You can also specify what the error message will be. So I've put that under additional information. The error message will be as follows: login details incorrect. Please review and resub. We know we know we see these kinds of messages pop up. You know, okay. So if you put in incorrect details, uh, you will then see something in red. You know, like a message will pop up and say, login details incorrect. Please review and resubmit. Okay, so so that is it. Okay, this is just an extra that I've added here. Um, yeah, just a bonus point, really. Um, because, it, again, it relates to, to user stories. Um, it wasn't really part of the outline, but I think it would be helpful for, for you to, to understand the definition of ready. So can I just do that quickly? It's a status for stories and tasks that allows to prepare the issue for sprint planning. So at some point, you get asked, as in, to agree you know, with your team, the definition of ready for your user stories. Again, definition of ready for your user stories. So different businesses have different definitions of ready. You know, it all depends on what they have agreed on as an organization. So in your case, it depends on what your team members have agreed. So for, I've given a simple example, um, definition of ready for a user story. So it's just like um, an agreement. You know how like you've got terms and conditions and all those kind of things like, um, yeah, uh, policies that everyone must abide by. So you're saying that for your user story, let me tell you what this means. It means that for your user story to be considered as ready for sprint planning, it must meet a certain number of conditions. Okay, so that's what the definition of ready means. There's another one called the definition of done, but for today we're just talking about definition of ready. Okay, so uh, these are the conditions that the, your user story would meet. Again, your team would have agreed that these are the conditions for the story to meet. So I have just put a simple one, and these are the ones that we use for my in my organization. So um, <clears throat> user story has to be written using the appropriate template, you know. And in our case, it's the Gherkin syntax. The user story. Um, um, sorry, I don't mean the the, the format. You know, the um, I say I want to. You know, then the user story should be documented in Azure and linked to an epic. So I'll show us how to link all that when we go on the Azure um, board. And then the acceptance criteria should be written and understood by the by the team. So again, as I said, the user story is not complete without the acceptance criteria. And wireframes must be documented if relevant. Not every story would require a wireframe, but if relevant, then it should be documented you know, and then uh, easily accessible. And then the process maps should be documented if relevant, okay? Now, I appreciate that this must be a lot to take in. So we're going to open up like for 10 minutes and take questions and then we'll go um, and have a look at this uh, Azure Spring board where we can, um, where we can populate the backlog and I'll show you how to navigate. Okay, so it's now open for questions. Let me see, I can see everybody that's that. Okay, so um, so I can see D, A, and then there's Uzumina as well. Um, okay, they're quite, if you, just a second, let me see. All right, so I'm not sure in what order you raised your hand, so bear with me, I'm just gonna call in the order I can see here. Okay, so, um, who's DA? Can you unmute and ask your question?
Um, I don't know if you're speaking, but we can hear you, D-A. We can hear you. Okay, right. Um, Ozomena, can you um, ask your question? Can you hear me? Uh huh. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Right. Just a, a quick question. Um, in in terms of the acceptance criteria format, mm -hmm. uh, can me as a BA be the tester, or do we need an independent tester? Oh, you aren't a tester. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah you know. You know. BAs. We, we are not the ones that would do all the technical work and develop the the products. You know, the solution. Okay. Our job is to stand, you know, we're we kind of like the mid, how will I put it now? The bridge, you know, between IT and the clients. So we're going to the clients, getting the requirements, documenting the requirements in a way that the team can understand, and then handing it over to the developers, you know. So they develop, and then the testers, the QAs, do uh -huh. the testing. They do the testing. Okay, so uh, everything I'm going to write is based on the testing made by the QAs, yeah? Uh, so, so it's not, it's going to happen before. You're going to write it before. before. It. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Um, but also, bear in mind, I've said that you will not, be, you will not do testing, but okay. BAs can be involved in, in user acceptance testing in the sense that sometimes you can prepare, um, you can help the client prepare for user acceptance testing. So, you know, like if you've okay. created, so let me use an example now, like in my workplace, we're developing a solution, you know, an application, we're trying to improve an existing um, platform. In fact, mm -hmm. the, the, the business was trying to change from Excel to another platform. And mm -hmm. then the solution that was um, offered to them was an existing platform, but it then has to be adapted to suit the, the client's needs. Okay. So, when we do, you know, when you create a new feature, maybe like you create a button and mm. you say, click on this one, it will take you to this. Mm. You would, would then release it into the UAT environment, you know, the test environment, so that the users can try it and see if, they, if it's working as it should, you know, or if there's any okay. faults, okay. then they can now, you know, bring it to your attention. Okay, okay. so that, that's user acceptance testing anyway. This is even after the testers have done their own their own work. So yeah, you you are not going to do the test, testing. There will be an independent uh, tester, tester. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask one more question, please? That's fine. Yeah. So in terms of uh, the user story format mm -hmm. that you specified, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when when it gets to that stage, so we we what we do is uh, now. Do we go and seek independent um, uh, people to be able to get their stories that we're gonna use, isn't it? Okay. So, so you know, you're going to be involved in a lot of um, um, conversation with the business. Okay. So, if you remember yesterday, your tutor Bolu was saying that sometimes even the the um, the business might not really be sure what they want. So that's why you'll be speaking to subject matter experts, you know, and a lot of these things happen, they don't happen in isolation. So you'll be speaking to, so, okay, let, let's go back to the start. Okay. What would what would make um, a business want to um, start using a new application or software? It will be, sometimes it will be, a lot of times it will be because of complaints, isn't it? Oh, yeah. this system always seems, seems to hang. This uh, application has crashed. It can't mm -hmm. deal with the volume of data, you know. Okay. It's outdated, it's problematic. It, it keeps doing this washing machine thing, you know. People are complaining. And then if you come in as a business analyst, your um, job is to kind of see, okay, what is happening now? What are the gaps? So oh, yeah, I think yeah. Bolu talked about the as, yeah. as is and to be, right? Mm -hmm. So what is happening now? What is this system able to do? Oh, okay, it's actually all right. However, it takes 15 minutes to upload uh, customer data. Nobody wants to sit down and be staring into their screen for 15 minutes, you know? Okay, we want something faster. All right. Um, let's see, is there something off the shelf that we can adapt to suit the, you know, so you're having those conversations with the business. What are your pain points? 
they're like, ah, it's time consuming. Or sometimes the system will just time out and log me off. I have to start from scratch. You know, these are complaints. These are, you're trying to address those pain points, you know, identify the gaps. And this is for like a process improvement or an improvement project, right? So okay. you're having this discussion. You are writing, you're writing. In fact, you will write, all right, you'll be writing, taking notes. And then you are reconfirming because sometimes the things they are telling you are so technical. Uh-huh. As a business analyst, you must not hold back from asking questions. Even when you are saying, oh, I think that's a stupid question. You know what? It's better to, you will feel it's stupid, but it's a valid question. That's the truth. A lot, 99.9% of the time, it's not a stupid question. You understand? So, and then it's expected that you ask questions. If as a BA, they say any question, you say no. It's like, mm, wow, all right. <laughs> so people expect questions. So that's how you begin to understand. Now, in terms of, what you're going to be building. Mm-hmm. You'll be speaking with maybe subject matter experts or people that are, or the users. Remember when we're talking about the user story that you put yourself in the user's perspective. Mm-hmm. So you have to speak with somebody that uses the system or the person that is going to use the system. Okay, mm-hmm. what would you like to see? Oh, I'd like to have a landing page, you know? And then like, okay, so what would be in the landing page? You understand? You can also do your research as in what would be on the landing page and you can talk to people, you know, about it. Uh, do your research, speak to the subject matter experts, or see what's uh, immediately available in the business. Okay, these are the components of the landing page. And that's how you start to form those little, little points. And then in some businesses, you have like the developers discussing with you because they might have more experience to say, uh, traditionally, this is what you will get on the landing page, you know? Okay. So so you're talking to people and getting help from from all, all, all corners, really. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. No worries. Okay, uh, Mohammed. Uh, sorry, please. I have like um, a few questions, just about three. So I would okay. like, I'll try to keep them as short as possible. Okay, that's fine. Uh, please, uh, regarding the uh, user story, mm-hmm. you said like, you know, it has to be independent. Yes. So, and I, something is like, I'm kind of a bit confused. Like, does that exclude the um the uh, internal and external dependency uh, okay yeah okay so what i mean i said independent of future stories okay. do you understand i said so i cannot let me see uh, what would i give as an example no uh-huh okay so i cannot in all honesty so if you look at the screen now you can see the screen right you see under the header menu where there's ability to register and ability to log in. I will not be expecting to have the ability to log in if I've not yet had the ability to register, isn't it? Yeah. You understand? That's, that's so so if I can't put ability to log in, ah, I have to register first before I can log in. So, so if I were to put ability to log in in Sprint 1 and put ability to register in Sprint 2, we definitely are going to have a problem because that ability to log in story is going to be blocked by the ability to register story. So it should be independent of future um future stories. Okay. okay. It doesn't it doesn't mean that stories don't sorry, it doesn't mean that stories don't have interdependencies and all that. But what and they cannot be put together in like in a chunk, you understand know, that we're going to do this side by side or in the same sprint or jiggets, but not that you put one, um put the horse, is it the card before the horse? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And thank you. I think thank you for the clarity about that. Okay. My second question is just about the Gherkin uh, syntax. Okay. So uh, in your practice, has there been any, apart from like, you know, using it to write uh, acceptance uh, criteria, mm-hmm. in your practice, has there been any situation where you use it to write uh, a user story? Like, uh, do you know, like maybe if they use it to write user story as well? Oh, well, um, so I've shown us today the, the format of the user story. So the the as uh, uh, I want to okay. Um, in my knowledge or and experience, the Gherkin syntax is used for the acceptance criteria. The user story follows a different format, which is the one I'm just going there now, which is the as uh, I I want to so that okay. So in my experience, I haven't seen um the Gherkin syntax being used in writing a user story on its own. And lastly, please, uh, I just want to talk on my Azure board. Um, I, I don't know why it's not working and I've tried, I, I don't know, like 
at this stage because you know anytime I try to log in, it's gonna tell me like I need some sort of um, uh, permission or something. And I've tried mm -hmm. I've logged out, I've tried again and again, and it's okay. not working. So I don't know what, okay, I, so, what I need to do about that. So, so that that yeah. might be something that you would have to take up within your project um group and speak to the scrum masters. They should because they would have they should have access now. The scrum masters in your group should have access now. And they are the ones that will like onboard you to um, Azure, you know, so they will put your details on there so that you can have access to it. So they will be the ones in the best position. So this, the scrum masters, create, they set up the Azure, the settings. What we are doing as B is like, I'm going to show you today, is navigating, putting the stories, making sure there are epics there, you know, moving the stories across, backlog grooming, okay, product backlog grooming. However, setting up the uh, Azure board, that has to do with them, um, you know, the Scrum Master. So it's something that you might want to pick up with the, um, the Scrum Masters on your team. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. No worries. Okay. Next on my list is Rose. Rose Onya. Hi. Um, good evening. Hi. Um, good I'd evening. like to ask, um, when, when I'm writing my user stories, at mm -hmm. what point, who is to decide that they have written sufficiently? Okay. enough to cover the project that's number one number yeah. two is uh must i have must i write a user story that talks about like example when a user provides an invalid password must i include that yeah so okay so that's the acceptance criteria isn't it so the because the user story would just be the one yes, that's the acceptance criteria yeah. yes. yes 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 okay so you want to try Oh, what was your first question again? And uh, who determines if it's complete? Isn't if it's, it? Yeah, sufficient. Like, sufficient. is there someone that will review mm -hmm. it? Okay, it's okay. Okay. Or, yeah. Or... Okay. So I'm I'm just going to share with you my own um, experience, right? And and I'll also tell you what what you'll be expected to do right here in, in Blue Sky. In fact, let me start with Blue Sky. So, um. You will be expected to have a meeting with your your fellow BAs, you know, and agree um to meet your product owner when you meet with your product owner that's where you will now do your requirement elicitation right and then they tell you like the product mandates and project mandates and you know tell you okay this is what um, um this is what i'd like to see this is this and that, 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 that. Mm -hmm. when you've written your story you also need to go back to the product owner for approval so okay. the product owner is the one that when i say right okay this covers what this is what I want to see, or mm, this is not quite right, you know. So the product owner. So if you if you go to the Azure board, you will see approved. Okay. okay? Yeah. So <laughs> the, the product owner will be the one to say, okay, that captures everything I want. So this is fine, you know. Okay. Yeah. And then the second one was um, the acceptance criteria, right? So my answer yeah. to that is that you need to cover as many scenarios as possible. Sometimes you might even miss it. When you go to, like I know what's obtainable in my organization is, um, if you've even left one scenario out, because these things, if I've been honest, can be very complicated, you know, and you're just trying to simplify things. So you might go to like a, a refinement meeting and they're like, oh, we need to put another scenario in. Maybe I've put four scenarios. They're like, um, I think we need one more scenario. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So I'm sharing my screen, you know, and they're mm -hmm. telling me we need one more scenario. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So one name would that scenario be? I'm typing it out. I'm writing it, you know, and they're telling me exactly how it should be. So you're working together. So it doesn't mean that you you might not have the knowledge to put everything down there because true. most of these things, I'm telling you, most of these things are technical, you know, but with your knowledge of... um processes all you need to know is understand the process try discuss with the um, product owner try as much as possible to get as much information as possible from the product owner when you're reaching your stories you go back and then the product owner approves so when you are when you are speaking to the rest of your team because they will be the ones developing and testing they might see something that you can't see you know because you've written your story from the aspect of uh, a user but mm -hmm. they would also want to be testing because they know they know their own stuff. You know your own stuff, right? So there's no there's nothing to feel, you know, bad about. You know what you're doing. They know what you're doing. So it gets technical, and they'll tell you, okay, maybe we need to add one more scenario, or that other scenario is not relevant. It's fine. You don't you don't need to put um uh um the um field um 
incorrect um, password, you know, that the other scenario, it's fine. We know we'll do that anyway. So it depends on the experience of the of it, the developers and testers as well, you know, and what they require of you. So, but the most important thing is having a shared understanding. As far as everybody's on the same page, you are good to go. Okay, thank you. No worries, you're welcome. Um, I've got, um, so DA, let's try again if you can. Yes, hi, sorry, could uh -huh. you hear me? Okay, can hi. Hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, sorry. And uh, yeah, apologies. I have a, well, just one question. And if it's an, I apologize if it sounds like an obvious question. But it's what fine. exactly is the Gherkin? So, yeah, bringing you back to the Gherkin Center. Mm -hmm. What exactly is it? Because I'm trying to picture it in my head. And I think, is it like a font and what app that? Oh, okay, when okay. You said, I get what you yeah, mean. You said Gherkin, I went on Word and Excel and I could. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking for comic stands? <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> So you won't find it. <laughs> no, no. App that you don't care. <laughs> I know. See, I, I know what you mean because even when I said, uh, when is that? It all sounds like big and complicated, exactly. like beha behavior driven development syntax of Gekke. <laughs> if I'm being honest, it was when I was preparing for this thing that I saw behavior driven development syntax of Gekke. Okay. Yeah, it sounds very professional. Well, it's just, it's really simple. This is the Gherkin syntax. So it's not um, a font size or anything. It's just the format. So you want to say given, so let me take it further so we can see. So these are the examples, right? So this ah, is the Gherkin syntax. Okay. okay. When I was interviewing for um, my current role, um, they asked me like a big fat question and I was answering it. And then the one, the one question that came in was, so how would you write your, the acceptance criteria? I said, yeah, I would write it in the Gherkin syntax format. So it's just like a, an industry, um, how would mm -hmm. I put it? It's just, yeah, it's- Industry the, standard. The way, in, yeah. Thank you very much. That's the word. Industry standard, like that is how you would write a, a acceptance criteria. Okay. However, like I said before, this is not the only way to write an acceptance criteria. Remember we said that the acceptance criteria is a list of conditions. Yeah. So depending on the kind of, the complexity or the kind of story, some acceptance criteria, they write them like, user must not be able to log in with incorrect this. When user puts this, 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 this must happen. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm putting them in bullet points and sentences. Yeah. But they are conditions, you understand? It's just that, um, for testing, this is really simple. So it's just like saying, when I'm on the landing page, so let's go to one example now. Yeah, giving them a, so, but let me just flip this a bit. So giving them a um, registered user, um, like maybe when I'm on the landing page and I enter my, so let's use this, and I enter my password and I click, so it's showing you the step-by-step. Step. So yeah. let me give you another example. When I'm on the landing page, if I um, hover, over whatever, um, I should see something pop up. When I click on it, it should lead me to maybe the, the uh -huh. maybe if I hover on the uh, payment um, thingy, I will see a drop down. If I click on it, I'll see payments. If I click on that, it leads me to a payment page. And when I put in my details correctly and hit submit, my payment will be successful. Do you get it? It's, it's yeah. step by step. So it makes it easy for the testers to test every single part of that that mm -hmm. um, solution yeah so the okay. getting syntax is just a format right okay. and like i said it you, acceptance criteria please let's not get it wrong here you can write acceptance criteria with different uh, there's another format I, well i know of this getting syntax and another format which is just bullet points like stating what you want the system to do yeah you know yeah but then in in ba balance um getting syntax is what is usually obtainable Okay. okay, so that means that, so um, that means obviously you're writing get it. That means you have multiple scenarios, depending on the kind of, you have multiple scenarios. Yes, like, depending on how simple. To, so is there like a maximum number of scenarios? Yeah, scenario one to a hundred, for instance. Would that not be too I, No, no, I doubt, I doubt you have hundred because again, okay. remember what we said about a user story. It has okay. to be, it, it has to have that ability to be completed within yes. a sprint. Yes. By the time you're having hundred scenarios, that means they will test for like at least a hundred days. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I'm just exaggerating, but you get what I mean. Like so, okay. um, yeah. So okay. there isn't a a limit, but I I mean you will kind of you will kind of know by the time you start breaking the epics into features and the features into smaller pieces of work, you mm -hmm. probably wouldn't have them. Sometimes you might have written a story and then you now agree. The team now says mm, this story is looking so, it's looking too big. 
mm-hmm. I think we should split it. So it might have so many aspects, and or maybe two aspects. They can now split it. Okay, so it's not set in stone, but okay. you cannot. A, um, a user story must be small. Remember the invest um yes, criteria exactly. we talked about. It has to be small enough to be completed within a sprint. Okay, all okay. right. So um, all of this, if I'm, can I confirm? All of this will be captured in Excel or in Word or how exactly? No, no. So I will show you. That's why I'm going to. So that's why I left the. Um, um backlog population till after so that i will show you all how we capture it and where we capture it okay, okay. so we're going to capture it on the azure azure board okay, okay. all right right okay. so um i apologize if your hand has been up for a while because i'm just following this list uh, lola lola sani yeah. so we've got Hello. so we've got lola after lola timmy and there's somebody here showing a zoom user uh, and then wumi okay lola yeah, thank you. Um, you, I noticed that your epic, uh, uh-huh. on your epic, you had just the landing page. So uh-huh. I just wanted to be sure that ideally, uh-huh. for in developing a website, normally you will uh-huh. have several other features yeah. under your epic. You wouldn't oh, just oh, do defi- the page. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay. You might even have things like maybe an epic for authentication that has to do with the proper signing. You might have an epic for payments. You know how like you've got different payments and you know you have got PayPal, you have a credit card payment, you've got what are the different, you know, all the different types of payments and um, Klarna, um, all sorts, you know. So the, the, I just I didn't want to belabor the yeah. point really. Yeah. So this yeah. sounds like a lot of work in reality. It is a lot of work. <laughs> it is okay. that's why you'll be busy. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, is a lot of work. Yeah, no yeah. worries. Okay. Um Timmy Tokwe. Ah, it's like somebody else. Okay, Timmy Tokwe, you're next. Yeah. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Okay, so yeah, so um I'm just I just need to clarify something. Okay. okay, so uh, in a case where we have uh, the PO and the BA, uh-huh. so, uh, who is going to handle uh, you know the same project? Who is going to handle this um, user story and then um, the acceptance criteria? Sorry, That's did you say PO idea. and BA? Yes, PO. That's yes, the product owner, owner and the BA, right? Yeah. It yes, is the work. Project. It is the job of the business analyst. So in my um in my office where I work, right? I've got a PO, but the PO is so busy. In fact, I hardly even get to speak to the PO. They just pass on everything. Like So the PO is just giving you a clear stare, like direction, like, okay, this is what we're going to be focusing on now. You know, and like in my, in my, in my office now, right? We started working on something and they've said, um, no, no, leave that, put that on hold. This is what we want to focus on right now. Like everything else you're doing, push it back take on this you know or take this on right so that's what the po is the po's job is to give that direction and stare you know to stare things in the right direction and to say okay this is what we're going to prioritize this is what we're focusing on now this is what the business needs but in terms of writing those user stories and the second criteria that is the <coughs> we have the pleasure as business analysts to do that yeah okay okay thank you so much so this this go on uh, I'm looking beyond um, what you have explained now. Yeah. Because um, the, the example you gave, you mm-hmm. know, about, you know, um, somebody going online and be able to make... Um, um, purchases, yeah. Purchases. So mm-hmm. I'm looking beyond um, what we have now. I'm looking at keeping customer data safe on the system, mm-hmm. customer information, security, mm-hmm. and then, you know, also try to prevent hackers. You yeah. Know, Get into the system, so um, the business analyst uh, might not be able to, you know, be able to itemize, mm-hmm. list all this, capture yeah. everything in the user story. Yep. So I, I'm thinking other other team in terms of maybe they have internal control, they have uh, um, security, they mm-hmm. have database team. Yeah. You know, all this, they will need to have input. Yes. For, for the BA to actually have. A presentable and you know something that will capture all the things that needs to be done. So I'm thinking the business analyst will not be able to put all this together because everything all together will make a good system because yeah. you have a system that protects customers' data. No mm-hmm. hackers can go in. It's well stored. You are buying things online. Your card yep. information is stored. So 
you know, it goes beyond the BA just doing this. So probably you can throw more light on this so that, you know, okay. the user story is basically what the developer will use. Yes. Will, you know, it will be going to each team. So how will no, no. the BA be able to you know, okay. do all this? Do you know, in asking the question, you've actually answered the question, Um, Yeah. So what you said, so um, somebody told me, um, oh, you've gotten a job as a PA, you're finally putting your skills to use in the sense that if you'd like to talk, this is the job for you. You need to ask a lot of questions, right? And like I said, you've already answered the question. So again, if you remember, I mentioned that some things are technical. You're not expecting to know everything. In fact, I used to think that you needed to know everything until I started working and I realized like, you know, even people that have been working for, like 10 years, you know, 15 years. Okay, even if you've been working for 20 years in the private sector and they now put you in a, in, in a public sector um, project, do you know that you'll be like a fish out of water because you will never know the the, the, the lingo in that um, sector. So again, you will start to learn. You will start to ask questions. You start to talk to people. Remember that I mentioned subject matter experts. So the people that you're referring to, the security people, the IT people, the data, maybe data governance people you that you will need to talk to. That is where you will get your information from. Okay. So you just need to ask questions. You might not even know the people to speak to, but guess what? Like your peer, remember I said that your product owner will give you a step in the right direction. So they could tell you, and uh, you might want to go speak to the guys in social, social department or blah 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 or they've got one document there or dig it so they can point you in the right direction if not you can also do your own research to find out who you should be be speaking to because you are very right you might not be able to capture every single thing a lot of times the people that uh, if you speak to subject matter experts they they should know you know who you should be speaking. they might not have all the answers but they should be able to point you in the right direction so requirement elicitation is a, is is it's a lot, right? Because you want to capture everything clearly and completely. So you want to be speaking to the people that you should be, be speaking to and not leaving anything out or leaving anything to chance. Okay, does that answer your question? Um, okay, I can't see you again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Jennifer. Okay, Thank you no, so much. no worries, no worries. Um, Adiola. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the section. It's, it's, uh, it's quite uh, enlightening because earlier today where we had our BA meeting, I was quite confused as to what yeah. we were doing. Mm -hmm. I know I've been able, from the last guy that asked um, the questions, I'm, I'm yeah. glad he asked them because mm -hmm. we answered some of my questions in that. So we, we, from the classes we've had, mm -hmm. we've a product owner and we'll be doing a lot of back and forth in gathering yes, our yes yes but it's quite interesting now for me mm, I mean, yeah it's beginning to come to life isn't it like exactly. practical <laughs> because people are like oh my god <laughs> yes I so bored and all of that <laughs> but I, I i because i'm i i know i mean i was confused but it's coming together now. So I understand that we're going to be doing a lot of back and forth with the product owner and all. So gathering our information, which is where my question comes in. You mm -hmm. were saying that if we gather information, we cannot all put everything together. It has to be, it, it has to stop at some point. Like, um, what's the word again? I'm, I'm trying to, independent, uh -huh. simple, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like it, for me, because I'm 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 a um, grammarian. It has to be. I'm <laughs> trying to use like an example. Like yeah, I'm a boy. No, no, no. Let me say, mm -hmm. I is going to work, and after work, then I stop there. I can't stop there. After work, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Okay, like, so that, that's the way I've captured it in my. So now my question now is, if you're speaking with the product and you're on, like like the lady said, you can't have one two three four five six up to twenty do you understand what i mean mm, mm -hmm. so can we split it and take it to the next pins and what are the consequences if we're taking it to the next pins? is it going to stall the project okay or yeah you're actually worrying more than <laughs> that kind of worry shouldn't really be your responsibility let oh. me ex let me explain why let me explain why but you've asked a really good question right and um, so your your job right is to okay discuss with the product owner and maybe subject matter so in this setting in blue sky it will be the product owner that will be giving you the information you need right in um 
some other setting like other organizations you probably be speaking to lots of different people and all that you start writing your stories however remember i said you have to go you have to discuss with the product owner and they will let you know the priority for that sprint okay the product owner will always tell you so and that's how so even if you have like a hundred stories Yes. Of course, you cannot come. You know, the sprint is just two weeks. So you cannot commit 100 stories into two weeks. There's no way they can, you know, deliver all that, right? Okay. Now, the product owner will not tell you, um, Ajola, I would like um these five to be done in these two weeks. The next seven in the following... And that's how... Have you heard of a, a roadmap? Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you now create your road, roadmap map because that's how you'll be tracking. So you say like sprint one, we need to complete. We're hoping to complete this, this, this and this five. And uh, sprint two will be that the seven. Sprint three, maybe only two because those ones are big stories. Sprint mm -hmm. four, you understand? So that's so it's the product owner that informs that decision. Do you get? So mm -hmm. you aren't going to say, um, and this is what you prioritize because guess what? The product owner knows more about the business than the business yeah. analyst. You understand because the product owner is the representative of the business. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so they, that they are the ones that will tell you this is what, like I mentioned, and um, a while ago we were working on something, and then the product owner came and said, "Can you leave that right now? This is the hot, um, <laughs> this is the 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 pain point right now. Everyone is complaining about. We need to focus on this and deliver it so that we can satisfy them, and then we can pick, we can then pick up the work that we left." You know, mm -hmm. so it's the, it's the product owner that makes those decisions, you know, so you don't worry oh, about it. Yeah. You don't have control over the back and forth, the back and forth. The product owner, because I believe they they, 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 they understand the time attached to each paint, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. what if we keep having like a back and forth, back and forth? What can uh, we so you want to make sure you're not having a back and forth and back and forth because like they will tell you in blue sprint, your product owner is not, might not be readily available. Yes. And like I said, in my, in my organization, for the past two months, I've not been able to speak to my product owner. So I've had to come up with clever ways of getting things done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So bear that in mind. So even in your projects, your product owner will not be readily available. That's why like your BA mentor can tell you that when you are having an elicitation meeting, please go with as many questions as you have. You understand? Yes. I feel like you can get as okay. much. So don't get me wrong. You might not get everything in one go, but you want to limit. Imagine you, you know the product owners, right? They are like high up there. The product yes. owner in my organization, right, is in charge of lots of the, the, the head of something, something delivery and all that, you know? Yes. Like he has his hands in different projects. He doesn't even have time. He can tell you, I'll meet with you 11 a.m. on Monday. Send me the, if I, you speak to the assistant and he will say, that's fine. Okay, you set the uh, meeting up, send invite, they will accept it. 11 a.m., you will see there's no other meeting. It's not that he's ignoring you, but it's no other meeting. You'll be sitting there waiting. Oh, let's give you five minutes. Let's give you 10 minutes. Let's give you, okay, we'll res reschedule. You know, like, so it is, so the day I will get him, I should be ready, isn't it? Like, the day he will turn up, like, ah, yeah. today that I've gotten you, like, I have to ask all the questions. So you cannot avoid the back and forth but you want to limit it isn't it imagine if somebody's always coming to you the person asks you a question today tomorrow they come and ask you please get your act together you know that's what nobody will tell you that but oh, <laughs> I'm, i bet you they'll be thinking get your act together didn't you know this question yesterday so mm -hmm. as you are doing some work there, there might be some new developments yeah. that will cause you to have more questions that is fine don't feel like you are a nag or a bother right ask the questions that you need to ask but we have to be strategic about it you know we have to be on top of it like so when you have if your product owner now in blue sky tells you let's meet for half an hour or one hour uh, uh, let's meet from seven to eight please go and do your research like okay and um, so don't be waiting but tell us what you want about the project because you sometimes do you know sometimes the users might not really know exactly they can tell you i want a shiny new wristwatch for example mm -hmm. They've not specified what kind of this one. Um, is it leather strap or mm -hmm. um, is it gold plated or whatever, whatever? Is it mm -hmm. designer? Do you get like? Mm -hmm. So you will go and do your research. If you know you're going to be developing an app, you go. Google is your friend. I'm telling you, Google is. Go and Google. What are people doing? What are this? So when you're coming, the person might not even be so sure. You might not even be saying, okay, 
this might be a, a solution. What do you think? GK, you're happy in that negotiation. Remember, we said we talk about negotiation, like yeah. you, sometimes you might be driving the solution yeah. and driving it in your favor sometimes because and you might, so how can you, you, might you be, solutions? Sorry? I'm so sorry to Why mm-hmm. trying to drive a solution? How mm-hmm. do you make sure that you are not the one influencing the product owner such that they don't come back to say it was your idea? Okay, so no, no, so you know everything, like I said, there will be approval, isn't it? Yes. So when you're written your user story, whoever initiated whatever, you had a yes. discussion, right? Now yes. you've written your user story, you have your scenarios, your certain criteria, you have your um, additional information and everything, you will eventually go back okay. to the product owner. And that is why they have final responsibility. Okay. And that's why if you see, and when I show you the job board, you will see the approved column. Now, don't get me wrong. Not every organization has approved column. But oh. as a business analyst, it will be assumed that your product owner has approved. So some developers will ask you, has this been approved? But then if you've if you if you've met with it, you have proof, isn't it? A lot of times you will have the, the stories in an email. Okay, like, like a mail thread. You get like, there will be, so a good practice, right? You would, yeah, expecting that, expecting to be in constant communication with your product owner, isn't it? So, yeah. you shouldn't really be carrying any any story to spring planning or refinement meeting that hasn't been approved by, yeah. The, yeah. So that's where they take ownership for it. So okay. that is, so it's not on you, yeah. Thank you so, thank you so, so. No much. worries, no worries. I feel like I'm working already. <laughs> yeah, everybody started working. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time we we go through the um, adjustment board, I think we will all feel better because you will have an idea how to populate the board and what you should be doing. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Wumi, you're next. The hands are going up, up, up. Uh, Mohammed, is that a new question or an old one? And then Rose, uh, Rose as well. Uh, is that, it's a new is question. That, okay, hold on. Let let um um Wumi go. So Wumi, Tosin, Mohammed, and Rose. Hi, Wumi. Okay, um, we can't hear you, Wumi. Um, while you're trying to get that sorted, Tosin, please. Um, Tosin, you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Is, or is it just me? I can't hear you. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, okay, Mohammed, you can go for it. Oh, uh, so please, I just want to ask. Uh, it's just related. This is this relate to PO and BA role. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a BA, like uh, in the past, like have you find yourself like doing a lot of uh, PO, like you know what they need to do? Maybe uh, I'm just asking this, like maybe in your practice, mm-hmm. did they kind of give you a lot of their work to do sometimes? Like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a good question. Um, bear in mind that as a as a BA, you can actually your career can evolve into the role of a product owner, and because you are constantly working with the product owner, you start you know you are on top of these things. Uh, in my organization, there's room for that career growth, right? Like you can you can stick to your BA role, or you can say, okay, I want to explore more. I want to try my hands on this. Yes, sometimes you have to double up as a as the PO. You understand? So like I was saying now, sometimes I struggle to get in, um, get a hold of people. What I do is I finish with the stories and everything and then send all the information over to say, this is what we are doing. Confirm or do you get? So I'm even asking for, um, oh, tell me, is it okay? I'm saying, based on our last discussion, this is what I have done. Um, let me know if you're happy with it. You understand? Then I might just get a simple, that's fine. You understand? And that's all the approval. I need so I'm not getting that much time from him. So you can say, in a sense, my role is overlapping, you know, into that um that area. Yeah. So yeah. Um hope that answers your question, Mohammed. Rose. Yeah, that, that's thank you. Okay. Rose, is um, that an old yes, it's not okay. an old question, it's a new question. Okay. I want to ask. As I'm doing the user story and I'm deciding, mm-hmm. and the PO is deciding that so so so, so pri- uh, the PO Priority. prioritizes what goes mm-hmm. on in the sprint shouldn't he talk to the developers before he's able to do that because what if he says i want this 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 in this sprint 
but it's not doable because of the time it's going to take the developers to okay so there's nothing that's set in stone and there's always com um, conversations going on okay so when it says i like to prioritize this remember i mentioned something about estimating so yeah. You will then go to maybe refine because how we do it uh, during our refinement sessions, we'll then put estim the developers will then estimate the time it will take, you know, and the complexity based on the complexity of the story and the time it will take. They will estimate the story. It's called story pointing. They would size up the story. Okay. Now, when they size up something, they cannot say based on the estimation we've done, we can only take. So even if the, the PO prioritized four, for example, and based on the team capacity, you understand maybe like there are only one there's only one developer or maybe two in my team there were six developers that I was working with and they now eventually became three now you know that the the turn the, 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 the turnover of work will be less now because it's half the number of developers in fact then I was I was churning out work to, because you're providing work for six developers it's like they are gulping the whole thing you know um but now it's three and I'm like far ahead as in because you work ahead of the sprint as a as a business analyst. So what were we saying? Um, in terms of like, oh, I want to prioritize this six. When you go for your refinement meeting, they've checked everything, they've estimated, and they said we can only commit four of the six into sprint. That is what it is. So you have to manage the expectation. You then go back to the other owner. So this this is where you know we talk about stakeholder management. I don't know yeah. if you've done that. Yeah. Stakeholder management, communication skills, and all that. That is it. The negotiation. You would like to have six, but based on our capacity, we can only do four. However, we we'll prioritize this two, you know, or if we if we finish anyone earlier, we can adopt another one, you know, and start working on it. You get so nothing is really set, set in stone. So it all has to do with keeping that line of conversation um open. Okay. Um the questions are not finishing today. Hey, <laughs> father. Um, there are three now. <laughs> okay. Um, so about Wumi, Temi, Tepe, and Oluwa. Okay, can I, okay can I? Wumi is ready. Can you hear Wumi now? So, okay, yeah, I can hear Wumi now. Oh, thanks. Thanks, though. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. I, 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 you've done a fantastic job. I can't believe you're still talking. You obviously must like talking. I need I'm Coke like. or water. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I've got two short questions. Okay. One question actually goes back to the um, Gherkin syntax. All right. Where you talked about the um giving when and or giving when then. Yep. Yeah, okay. yeah. Give so when I looked at the example that you gave. You you had um giving when, 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 mm -hmm. and and then. Not Sorry, the, you said I had the one. example. You had, so you had this yeah. One. So mm -hmm. you had two ands. Uh-huh. Yeah. So right. my question is in the acceptance criteria. Mm -hmm. So it's not set in concrete that you can only have one given, one yeah. when, one yeah. and and one then. So you could have like Two or three givens, one when, seven ands, and then two thens. No. Depending on no. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I did not say that. <laughs> Let me show you what I said. Okay. <laughs> so I'm taking you back to this uh, uh, page, right? I said, depending on in fact, let's go back here, right? Okay. It, but it's a good thing you asked that because you spotted something here. Yeah? And so if you see where I said and at the bottom, right? Oper yes. So and these are operators used to join or chain preconditions. And this and this continues any of the other three. The other three is referring to the given when and then, okay? And then, okay. The given when then. Okay, so let's move on. Depending on how complex the scenario is, you might find the and being used more than once. Okay. okay. And or in a different position than as shown earlier. So there might also be scenarios where the and is not present. So you might have a story that's so simple, given when then. Okay. okay. But so, so see these examples, right? Um, so I put only one and, but guess what? In the next, in the in the actual scenario, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, when, and, and so you have only one given, only one when, only one then, because there can only be one final yes. thing. But the and, like we said, they are connectors. So because like, because like you see, and. yeah, like yeah. because like you see, uh, when I enter my username, so when we're talking about when I enter in my details, so the details, what are the details? Maybe your username. Okay, look at the user story. It says, I want to log in with my username and password. So it's not just the username, there's also the password on. So when I get on that page, I put in my username, Gumi Adeyinka, then I now enter my password. So there has to be a connector. Okay. But once I enter my password, what else should I do? I will click. So I will keep putting that and until I've reached the last. And some shampoo. You understand? Yeah. So it's a connector. So 
some in some cases you can even see the and after the then always not yes. um, okay right so you can even see so sometimes okay let me let me put an and here now so um uh, given i'm a registered user when i enter my username and i enter my password and i click the submit button then i am redirected to my profile page then i can say and i can see my uh profile details something like that do you get did you get that uh with me that, did you get what i just said um elvis um i asking a question you are unmuted okay. hi elvis you are unmuted um are you asking a question <coughs> okay adiola you're also unmuted if you can mute please thank you okay Wumi, i hope that answers your question yes, that answers the first one. Okay, second that's... one a short right. one it'll be short right. okay and so i'm having a missing with my stakeholders and they don't okay. understand what well, they've given me their own set of requirements mm -hmm. however you know we're going to break requirements down <laughs> into user stories and then user stories further on into tasks yeah the user stories are ideally for my developers i'm thinking um a little bit ahead so in a situation where the business owners only understand their business language is it advisable to just to make just to make it easier for them can yeah. I share this? Sorry, 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 Wumi. Um, Elvis, please, can you mute, please? There's uh, a lot of noise coming from your side. Elvis, Idaho. And um, I think Fem Femi. Okay, sorry, Wumi, carry on, please. Sorry, yeah. So I'm just thinking, um, in the situation I'm meeting with stakeholders, mm -hmm. um, and they've got their own set of requirements, which is given to me as a BA. Mm -hmm. And excuse me, that is then breaking down to user stories for my developers and then for further on into tasks. So mm -hmm. to, make, to make it um, as plain as possible for them, because they probably only understand their own language, is mm -hmm. it advisable, I'm thinking ahead, mm -hmm. can you take the user stories back to the business and say, look, this is what we're talking about. So I can break it down a little bit into finite details. Is this story? What, what business is this? Is, that, is this your team? You mean or the clients? Um, well, I'm talking about the clients. Yeah. Clients. Okay. So you remember I said that you would obviously have to go back to the pro owner, um, to get that confirmation, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So yeah. So that's 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 what you need to do. Um, in terms I suppose of you're going to the business, go to the. Uh, okay. You, no, so so the, the 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 so you'll be speaking to a number of stakeholders. So you know how like you can speak to the owner, you can speak to uh, yeah. uh, like, so like somebody mentioned um, maybe policy, security, whatever, um GDPR, SMEs, and all that. What's your or, yes, yes. And, yeah. So you know what? They might not even see eventually see your see, like your product owner might never be interested in seeing it. Like <laughs> they just want to get the general gist, you know, that the yeah. points you're you're ticking those points. So what you want to do is you can always go back to anybody to confirm, right? To say, this is my understanding. So as a business um, analyst, you want to confirm, reconfirm. It might not only be with the P uh, product owner because sometimes you might have direct contact with the business or the users, the end users of the system. You might have a point of contact, a person that you might, you know, that might be representing the users, you know, the business users. Yeah. You want to go back and say, so this is my understanding of the things that you want. This, 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 and this, and this. Am I correct? <laughs> Do you know, in a lot of meetings, I'm always saying, is that right? Is that right? Am I correct in, in, in saying this? Or this is my understanding. Am I right in saying that, you know, okay. or this is how I have worded it. Have I correctly captured, you know, what you were trying to, you know, to, to, to say, you know? Okay. So you are going back. To... Capture their vision. Yeah. Yes. So don't, not necessarily. Yes, so not necessarily showing them your user story, really. Okay. Because sometimes it might not really mean much to 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 them, but to them. you know, but you already know what user story the points it covers. So, for example, if they are saying, "I want to see a login button," that one is I think login button, login button, ability to login. You know, so that one is like straightforward. But I get what you mean. Like we are giving really simple examples because that's where we should start from, right? But you know how these things can be. Yeah. You know, the real sense of things like, yeah, but it's all about going to confirm and reconfirm. Okay, so okay. we're going to take them, yeah. um, no worries, Thanks to the last two questions from Olua Tosin and Emmanuel, and then we can go on the board. Don't you want to see this board? So, <laughs> I put my hand down. Sorry, okay. Olua Tosin, uh, carry on, please. Okay, please, can you hear me now? 
Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Um, I don't know if I'm thinking ahead. Uh, That's fine. Uh, okay. In the case um, that you need to get probably your acceptance criteria from the end user, and um, probably you've been directed by the PO to meet the end users to get uh, the requirement, and probably they're not cooperating, maybe because it will render them redundant or something. I uh, wouldn't know if you've been in such a situation and uh, are you able to... Uh, well, we have to uh, see. Are you trying to interview me? Huh? <laughs> I already have the <laughs> job. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> this is an interview question. Okay, <laughs> let me just quickly... Answer. So that's like trying to deal with um, difficult stakeholders, right? And sometimes you might find out that... Uh, because what you're doing now, uh, you're giving uh, scenarios. Because it's not like something that's happened. Yeah, what you're anticipating, you know. 